But tonight, thank you uh, for joining us uh, uh, from uh, Harare this afternoon. I suppose uh, these are things that just come and go. Uh, Zimbabweans have been hit by so many blows. You know, this is one more that rolls down like uh, water off a duck's back. No? Yeah, you're right, uh, Godfrey. So really, the, these uh, developments are, are coming as a result of um, changes uh, in GDP focus, uh, particularly for 2019. So you'd actually note that there were some uh, uh, some significant shocks, uh, firstly uh, related, of course, to climate change, your, your cyclone, and also the drought that has uh, uh, really affected uh, the, the pillar uh, uh, sector in Zimbabwe in agriculture. So really, uh, in terms of growth focus that we're seeing, um, I mean, uh, the IMF is putting at uh, negative 7.1 percent uh, but we're also you know, looking uh, at institutions as, such as the economic intelligence uh, unit uh, yeah. estimating a, a, a contraction of 18 percent so really this talks to the deterioration um, in the uh, broader macroeconomic environment i think we continue to see significant weakness especially around the exchange rate uh, for yeah. the current situation yeah, but this is the challenge, isn't it, Batanai? Because we actually don't have an official exchange rate, and therefore we don't know actually what figure we should be using. So someone says uh, it's a uh, 18% contraction uh, this year. The IMF says 7.1 contraction, and I suppose that's a function of whatever exchange rate they are using. Yes, so it's a it's a it's a bit of a challenge, especially given that you know, especially on the part of uh, government. Uh, we've seen them actually deferring the publication of critical economic indicators, uh, things such as inflation, and we also do have um, a controlled interbank uh, market where the rate is uh, fixed at 15.37 uh, dollars. But on the parallel markets, we're seeing rates uh, moving uh, towards 20 uh, to 23 dollars. So really, it then creates a, a lot of room for you know economists and also independent you know, agencies just come up with their own figures. Mm. But the message that we pick up is really, you know, there's been a, a significant contraction, uh, just judging uh, really even from the companies that we talk to, uh, capacity utilization figures and things like that. So yeah. really we do expect uh, a contraction. Yeah. Uh, so one figure that uh, caught my eye when I was reading through your paper is uh, the fact that Zimbabwe is now largely an informal economy. I mean, that hurts because Zimbabwe used to have uh, a large manufacturing capacity. If I remember, actually, the contribution of manufacturing to total GDP set somewhere around 20% uh, in the 1980s heading into the uh, 1990s. And here we are, we are now, this is saying this is an informal economy. Just what remains of the formal sector? What percentage? Okay. Okay, so, so you find that, you know, capacity utilization levels have come down. And also, uh, if you then look at uh, the uh, employment levels, I think the um, unemployment rate is estimated at 80 to 90 percent. So really, it shows you that, you know, we are actually uh, largely uh, an informal economy where most of the activity really is happening uh, in the formal side. I think, you know, given that people, you know, are failing to find opportunities uh, in, in employment, they find themselves they setting up, you know, businesses or business uh, in the formal economy. So this is where, you know, uh, most of the activity is happening. I would actually say that, you know, we're looking at um, an informal uh, economy that, you know, uh, significantly larger than, than, than the informal economy. Yeah. Simply because even when you then look at companies, uh, when they report, say, uh, you know, the, the volumes growth figures, you find that some of these volumes growth is not really tracked within the formal channels. So you, you really understand that there's some demand coming from the informal side. So yeah. really, it's, it's really hard to come up with a figure to say how big uh, or how small is you know, the informal sector related uh, to the formal sector. Yeah, and yet you say that uh, Zimbabweans are some of the most highly taxed people in the world. I mean, how is the government able to do that uh, given the informalization of the economy? Uh, I think one thing that's uh, worth highlighting is that, you know, given the developments uh, on the ground, national treasury is quite limited in terms of how they can actually raise income. So the only source that they have is really through local tax, uh, I think in terms of uh, support or, or you know, uh, any other plans uh, or external support out there, uh, you know, it has not been coming. So really, uh, you then find that, you know, in terms of uh, personal income tax, that's actually quite significant. Uh, the highest that is 40 percent 
and also we've seen them introducing new taxes that also try to tap into the small sector. I think one of them, of course, is the intermediary money transfer tax or the 2% tax uh, that's you know, actually uh, uh, taxed on all electronic transactions. So really it shows you that the government is, uh, is actually limited in terms of the sources of, of income that, you know, that it can raise. So the only source really is uh, taxing uh, city. Yeah. Absolutely. Hold on tight. This may not be ending anytime soon, but I thank you. That's uh, Batanai Matsika, Head of Research at uh, Morgan & Co.